the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They are in Wroclaw, Poland, preparing for that friendly match against the Polish national team. For Coach Gunnar Raw, he wants to use this to um, keep the team together, achieve more results, see if there are new ways they can play as a team, but still stay off offensive. That's very important. The Super Eagles, they want to remain offensive. Tulu, um, with what you've seen on social media, what you've heard in the, in the mainstream media, the Super Eagles, are they making progress as you look forward to this match? Yes. Um, surprisingly, though, from reports I got from today's training session, I heard that he played a 4-2-3-1 in training. 4-2-3-1. Yeah, uh, which had um, Ndidi and Onazi as pivot, double pivot, double pivot, double pivot positions, I beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's a bit surprising to me because I thought he would have adopted what we, the, the tactics used against Argentina, which I think will be our best bet at the World Cup, you know, shove things at the back, keep it solid, and then hit teams on the break, take advantage of our pace all round. Mm. But... General has other other things he's working on. I think he's equally working on his plan B. Well, this doesn't look much like a plan B to me because this is how we played throughout qualifying for the World Cup. Mm. And I thought, well, let's do something else. But it looks like he's going to stick with the guys he's seen before. This is a tougher opponent. This is a more serious game. It is against Poland in Poland. Mm. They have the support of the home fans behind them. It's not like Argentina and Russia. So this is going to be different. So he's, I think he, he doesn't just want us to be to to this defensive maybe he wants to see how well uh, we can do going forward also so um in terms of that i think yeah still confident that we can grind out a result in that in, in that that's right so uh, the super eagles of nigeria gets it ready that match will be played tomorrow 8 45 p.m yeah. nigerian time so uh we should be looking forward to that but uh, let's talk about that four three two one formation again uh, wouldn't there be pressure on the midfielders uh, there will be some pressure because um, from the training and from the reports I got, Ihea Nacho played as a number 10 behind striker Odioni Gallo. Uh, if that is the case, Ihea Nacho is not the quickest of guys and he is not one particularly known for pressing from uh, the uh, attacking third of the, of the pitch. So <clears throat> I don't know how effective that will be. Hmm. Um, against Argentina, we had five guys in the middle and three defenders, so pretty much we had eight. This time around, I will assume we have another eight and two strikers in Ihanacho and Odenigalo. Uh, I do not know how Victor Moses will press because we didn't have him against Argentina also. Mm -hmm. But he's been playing a role at Chelsea that has ensured that his defensive play has really, really improved. But for Nigeria, we do not see him tracking back a whole lot. Against Poland, I do not expect that he will track back a whole lot either because... But against Cameroon, he did a lot of tracking back. Yeah, that was, the, that, that was a very as important the, game. As he got a goal. Yeah, that, that had to mm. be said. Credit to Victor Moses. Yeah. He played his heart out in that game. Mm -hmm. Undeservedly. Uh, sorry. Uh, unarguably, right? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Man of the match. You know? So, but um, let's look at what happens. From that tactic, I believe that he wants to... Genaro wants to see what his guns can do yeah. against the polish mm -hmm. and if things are not going well i believe we have our plan being the 352 yeah which, which he will switch into yeah. switch to immediately and from the men uh from the people employed at the back the defenders it might be difficult to switch to a three-man defense mid game mm. because he's not playing three central defenders which means if anyone drops into that position it will be a makeshift thingy mm. and it will not work too too well or we, we may not want to take that risk. So uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah. We, have, we have flourished playing the 4 2 3 1 mm -hmm. formation before. So shouldn't because be sometimes you know a team and a with a particular playing style, yeah. you get on the pitch and they've changed. So that's where a lot of everything is here, Tolu. Football has gone. That's why when you see those, those uh, it's tacticians. About, it's about the time and, and space. And it's, about, board, yeah. it's about what you do with the space you have as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of runners in the team. Oh, uh, in, in Didi, uh, Onazi, Ahmed Musa, Ahmed Musa Victor Moses, Moses, Moses mm. Simon. Mm. We have a lot of runners in that team. Tyrone Ebu, he had a great, great 45 minutes yeah. against Argentina. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. His speed was amazing. Brian Odu Idowu did not disappoint either. Mm. So we want to see these guys come into the team. I think the fact that we have age on our side is a big, big advantage, and these guys are very fast. So yeah. we can actually afford to sit back, soak in some pressure, and hit yeah. teams on the break. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And that's what friendly matches should be used yes. for. Uh, use it to experiment. Use it to, you know, check some holes and see if you need to block them. Will John Obi Mikel be missed? 
he will be missed, truly, because we do not have anybody who can really calm the nerves like John Obi Mikel. Mm. It was evident against um, South Africa last year, about a year ago. Mm -hmm. It was evident also against Argentina. It took a lot of tactical discipline. And I thought the presence of John Ogu equally played a part. But this time around, we are having Joel Obi join from Torino. He's had a ample number of games this season, and he has done well. Mm. I've seen a couple of Torino mm. games, not a whole lot mm. that he's played in, but he has been and we're happy that injury is not stressing him this yeah, time. he's back. So mm. in Joel Obi, in John Ogu, we have two guys who can really calm play. When they are training everything at you, they can do it the Busquets way. Hold up. Hold up, slow down. Mm. Let us get that thing Let's out refresh. of them. Let's get that thing out of them a little mm. bit and come play. Mm. In those two, we have them. However, they are not starters. Against Argentina with um, Mikel Obi out and a five-man midfield deployed, we had Ogwe in play. But if we are going with a 4-2-3-1 and his, pre uh, his preferred options are Onazi and Ndidi, mm. it means there will be no space for either Joel Obi or... John Ogu. And he's having good this time to have Ogene Karo at table. Yes, and he's equally out here. Yeah. He's been fantastic yeah, for last for Palmas. Palmas. Mm. He has been apparently the revelation of this 2018 for Nigeria. And it's the never... World Cup here. You must bring your A game. You know, you must. I... Austin, I can't tell you how surprised I am mm. to have seen Ogene Karo at table play really, really well for last Palmas. He has been doing so well in, mm. in a position where he's naturally not accustomed to. The defensive midfield position where Paco Jimenez has played him most this season, mm. he's been flourishing in that position. So, uh, it would have been good to have him, but he's not around. Let's see what Joel Ogu Obi, and Joel Obi can do mm. in terms of mm. coming the they pressure, have to. coming That's in why. nerves. That's why it's the Super Eagles of Nigeria and so much quality in the mix. Let's see what uh, Coach Gena Rock can do uh, with the talents available to him. The match we play tomorrow, 8.45 p.m. Nigerian time. We'll be here to give you all of the updates minute by minute as that game is being played in Poland. Sports tonight on Channels Television. Let's move on with the show now and let you know that the Dutch Football Federation, they have cleared Fortuna Citad of all the allegations uh, of illegal activities leveled against the club by uh, their former coach Coach Sunday Olise. Uh, Olise was suspended by the second division uh, Dutch side last month and claimed that he was punished due to his refusal to participate in illegal activities at the club. Uh, the former Super Eagles coach then petitioned the Dutch Football Federation to seek redress on the matter. I think for the love of the game, everybody should just... At Olise might have a case, but now that the Fortuna Stad has been cleared of any wrongdoing, I think everybody should just move on. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the best thing to do right mm. now. I did not like the fact he spoke out. You don't have to speak about everything. Maybe sometimes you just to. let it go. Maybe yeah. So if it's, if it's a wrongdoing and it cannot be part of it, maybe yeah, just have yeah. To speak if it's out. a wrongdoing, and you can't be part of it. But only say it's one too many already. One with an NFF, mm. another one with your very first involvement with a, with a foreign club. I thought he could have. Look, um, I will. Let us be realistic now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it might hurt his chances of getting a job. At That's what I'm saying, Fortuna Stad. Because Fortuna Stad shouldn't press charges. Everybody should just shake because hands the on themselves. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm they, saying. When, Everybody when should they, just when move they on. They were letting him go. They didn't say, they didn't say anything to indict his past. Now, he didn't mm. have to do it, yet mm. he did. Mm. I thought that was a mistake he made. Mm. But, well, it's done. Yeah. I, for, for the love of the game, That's right. I, let's hope that everyone just moves away mm. from this cleanly mm. and... I wish you said the best of luck in the future. That's right. I was also a professional, should uh, understand the situation, and then everybody will be fine.